Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Um, trying to make this video as fast as possible. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thank you for subscribing. If you did recently, I really appreciate that. Um, but anyway, um, my battery is kind of going on my camera. I'm trying to do a bunch of stuff today. Anyway, but um, today's King's X video is uh, album number eight. Came out in the year 2000, May 23rd, uh, 2000. Um, Second album of Metal Blade. Um, please come home, Mr. Bulbous. Here's my CD as I got the CD book and time. I think they're all three of them, actually. Yeah. Um, here's the compact disc signed by Doug. And I don't know if those little things on the top are part of it. Those little black spots or not. That's a product of being in a book. I even have the t shirt. It was, uh, ooh, look at the fading on the dates there. Minneapolis was August 15th, 2000. Yeah, the year 2000. They were road wars. They used to do these extensive tours from basically July through September, like two months. Um, inside the book and everything. So I gotta make this as relatively quick as I can because I don't know how much life is on my battery on my camera. I guess need be I can try to edit it later and film more later when the battery's recharged. Um, an, uh, an odd title for an album, but I always liked it. I thought it, it kind of threw me off initially and the, the green color scheme and stuff. It's gateful. Like this, like the other ones came on Record Store Day last year in 2021. Um, I think this is color like yellow, like a stain, like a gold. Yeah, yellowish. Um, please come home, Mr. Bulbous. So, I mean, yeah, it'd be the second sort of official album since I became a fan. New album, I guess, in a way. But, you know, I'd been a fan for four years and change, May 23rd of 2000. Um, it's an album I've always liked. And I thought my my a lot of my people online are talking to them about the, mostly in the Dream Theater community really liked it. But I, I think over time, it, it actually hasn't, it's sort of been kind of forgotten. Like, when this came out, I was actually really excited about it, more so than with Tapehead. Like, like it, it kind of stole some of the Tapehead thunder or whatever. My focus had definitely became more on this record than Tapehead. Um, I'm not so sure about that in terms of the way I compare the two, but my go-to's on this record... I mean, yeah, I'll say Marshmallow Field, Charlie Sheen, Smudge, and then the Move Me Sweet at the end. It's not a real long record. I mean, I, I remember I played some of the songs on on, it, on the radio. I think I played Smudge on KFA Radio, or maybe Charlie Sheen. I played Charlie Sheen for sure. So reading in the book, Charlie Sheen is not about Charlie Sheen, the actor. You know, it's just was a, it just sort of popped into Ty Tabor's head, I guess, when he's writing it. He's wondering if Charlie ever, he's never even heard it, but, um, Fishbowl Man was a song that, like, they never liked, he, like, didn't know what to do with, but it just sort of wouldn't go away, and they just finished it, I don't know if they felt like it was fully done, but it worked well enough to open the album, um, Julia, uh, She's Gone Away, some of these are kind of slow burner kind of pieces where they go slow, and then they have their, their kind of psychedelic, trippy sections, um, Smudge has that dynamic, those kind of back and forth, um, where it, it's, it was high and low, like the, the, the harmonics, it's like dissonant when you're not expecting it to be dissonant, it's sort of King's X sort of doing things, you know, that you're not expecting, they do, they, they expect the unexpected sometimes, not to the point where it's like Zappa or, you know, something Mike Patton would do necessarily, but they're not a straight-ahead rock band in that sense. They're writing your sort of melody, and it's not pop necessarily. If it's pop of the the left center variety, um, bittersweet. I was just listening to it, but I've been totally completely distracted by a few different things. Leslie Jordan's passing today, unfortunately, um, for the LGBTQI community. That you know, that's not great. And just as a fan of you know sitcoms and stuff like that. Um, so I, and I was kind of dealing with some stuff with work, so I was just, uh, kind of listening to this record this afternoon wasn't, I, I didn't give it the full attention that I wish I would give it, but I will say that this album, 
much more, at least a fair amount more than um, with uh, Tapehead is is more again democratic. There's more Thai songs on this. I don't know if there's any Jerry songs. I think Jerry does the narration on Fishbowl Man though, which I for the longest time I always assumed that was Thai, but it's not. I'm pretty sure it's Jerry, but um. The other thing that this album got known for, but the Spotify version, I don't know if it, versions of included all, there's all these little snippets from like one or two people in like Japanese and some other languages between songs. I always got known for that. But Spotify, I only heard one or two of them, but I wasn't listening that closely. So, um, you know, She's Gone Away, you're, When You're Scared. You know, a lot of these songs have these slow burning sections. She's gone away as a, she, and they've done that live a fair amount. That's that's another kind of trademark, you know, kind of state staple track off this album. I've always liked this album, but at the same time, I've kind of always felt like, you know, it's sort of like a, a, it gave me a lot of what I love. But they've done other albums that had more of what I love. But at the same time, there are other albums I don't like as much. It doesn't have as much. Like it, it's, it was like a good balance where. It, it reminds me of Ear Candy in that it's it's hard to really be like disappointed in it, but there isn't like it's not like like this sort of demanding classic. When you think of King's X, you think of this album. Though in my era, in some ways I sort of do because it came at that sort of peak period of my being a fan, really, in some ways. Because my focus had been sort of as King's X fans kind of growing as a fan. And this was a new album. It's like I wasn't around when Dogman came out. I wasn't around when Gretchen came out. I was around when this came out. Um, and Ear Candy, the whole status with the label and stuff and tape had, I don't know. So anyway, uh, what's your take on Please Call Mo Home Mr. Bulbous? You know, Marshmallow Field's a favorite. Um... That song's very trippy. I always thought that it had some Beatles reference. Marshmallow Pies with uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds and stuff. Uh, maybe. I, I didn't remember seeing something in the book when I read about that. But let's just, so we can wrap this up, let's look at the year and the year 2000. 2000 was a great year for music. So it, it didn't finish super high. Shaming of the True, number one. Pain of Salvation, that's by Kevin Gilbert. Pain of Salvation's The Perfect Element, number two. Disconnected from Fate's Warning, number three. Light Bulb Sun from Porcupine Tree, number four. I'm wearing the shirt, ironically, today. Call Florence Powell, These Are the Plans, number five. Transatlantic SMTE, number six. Spock Beard's Fee, the five, number seven. And then number eight. So it is in the top ten. Um, I don't know if I would put it any higher than that. There's a lot of... Giz Marjorie from Self came up, came in number nine. Spiral Architects debut, I'm Skeptic Junior's number ten. God's Be You, Black Emperor, my favorite, the Lift Your Sk the Skinny Fist record. That came out, Lift Your Skinny Fist Like a Tennis to Heaven. Number 11, Dove's uh, debut album, Lost Souls. Number 12, Enchant, Juggling Nine or Dropping Ten. Number 13, White Willow, the prog band from, uh, they're not Norway. Um, I can't remember where they're from. Somewhere in the um, Scandinavian era. The Sacrament, that album came out. Number 14, you whose last really good album to me, I'll Bet You Can't Leave Behind, number 15. New Pornographers, Master Magic, number 16. There was a lot of good record, records that year. Flower King, Space Revolver, my favorite Flower King's album. It came 17. The Last Galactic Cowboys album, Let It Go, number 18. Um, Steve Stevens, Clint, 1918. Muse, second album, uh, Half the World's Watching. Vast, the second album, Music for People, which has Freed, maybe their best song. Um, yeah, I mean, there was just a lot. That was a great year, 2000, but... Um, yeah, so anyway, just curious what your take is on this album. Where does it fit in the year 2000? Tomorrow I'll try to do Manic Moonlight, which came out the next year. But um, so i got to wrap this up given battery life and everything. But thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.